respectful. Meanwhile, Sergio Ramos cut short his press conference with Spain today. The captain said fielding constant questions about Lopetegui felt like a funeral. Now you're going to be talking about this shortly and Kevin Walsh has made just one change to his goalway side for Sunday's Connacht football final with Ross Common. That sees Paul Conroy come into the midfield in place of Peter Cook. 2014, All-Ireland winning hurling captain Leicester Ryan, meanwhile, has left the Kilkenny panel. The Clara player wasn't part of the matchday squad for their recent Leinster Round Robin win over Wexford. All right, cheers to that, Richie. It is time to talk Connacht football because for the third year in a row, it is Galway against Roscommon in the Connacht decider. Galway prevailed two years ago after a replay, but last year they went in as heavy favourites into the Connacht final and they were turned over by Roscommon at Pierce Stadium. A nine-point win in that game for Roscommon. Ray Silk is on the line and David Brady is alongside me in studio. How's it going? All's good, Nathan. Good. So, these two sides, they know each other well at this stage. A year ago, Galway were the coming team. Just how close could they go to putting some pressure on the real top dogs? And they get absolutely whipped by Ross Common. How far have Galway come over the last 12 months that we can be sure it's not going to happen again? <sighs> Look, at it's like everything else. Can we be sure? And on one hand, you question Galway, but on the other hand, you have to... Uh, Acknowledge the, the quality of Roscommon. They, they did get absolutely whipped in last year's uh, decider. And again, you can, the word complacency is, is, is mentioned. It's only mentioned after the final whistle. Mm. Uh, coming into that game, uh, nobody really gave uh, Roscommon the, the, the chance that, that they deserved. I thought they were, uh, you know, it, there's, you have to know Roscommon people. And uh, I wouldn't call them a, a cocky race, but. Um, they, they certainly don't have an inferiority complex and the players showed us. They were like, it was, I think it was 172 points at one stage. They, 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 they annihilated them. And um, Galway were never in the game to the bitter end. It's not often you can get a, a chance as a manager to shake the opposition manager's hand, walk into the dressing room, the game is still going on. And, and Kevin McStay had that, had that, uh, the, 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 the beauty of do, doing that last year. But um, have, have Galway improved? Um, I would say yes. And they've improved from last year, but ha has their minds, has their um, attitude improved? That's going to be a major test. Um, I don't doubt their football ability because they have great football ability and they're focused on their defensive system. Um, I give them credit for it. A lot of people say, oh, they're all gone too defensive. This, They've gone defensive to the point where, yes, I do feel it's taken away from some of the quality of the forwards, especially the likes mm. of Shea Walsh. Um, but he has a job to do, and he's willing to do it for the team. It's not where he does. Fi he finds himself with Damian Comer numerous times in a game on their own 40-yard line. If we think back to the great Galway teams, the Michael Donnellans of this world, Michael Donnell picked the ball up in the 40-yard line. Uh, I, would, I would describe Shane Walsh as, as a very similar type of player. But now you have 12 men still in front of you rather than two or three men to pass, as Michael Donnell did. He had, he had unbelievable speed. But yeah. if, you, if you have teams with systems that if you have attack and fours going up, you have to have an, a, defensive, a defensive six or seven staying back. Um, it's, it's, you know what, it, 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 I, for me, um, Hyde Park again, and I don't, no matter where you play or what you do in football, whether it's a club or a county or a Crow Park, if you have home advantage or it's your home turf, it's your territory, and uh, that, gives you, that gives you a sense of confidence and it's, 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 I, don't, I don't see this game going any other way but 50-50. That's sitting on the fence if I've ever heard it. No, I, I, there's a lot of stuff there, the we'll come back. There's yeah. a lot of stuff there that I want to I get into. Ray, 12 months ago, it was, it was a grim old day in many, many ways for Galway. And you look at the midfielders that day, Tom Flynn and Fintan O'Karoon, who were totally beaten up by Tiger Rourke and by Enda Smith in Roscommon. When you look at the two teams now, 12 months on, where Roscommon were able to target Galway 12 months ago, are they still able to target them in those positions this year or have Galway progressed so much that they're actually a lot stronger? They've learned so much from that game. It's a very different beast. Yeah, I, I think David made a lot of valid points there, but I think that defeat, you know, it took me about 20 minutes to process it, that game myself. I was right behind the goal when Brian Stack caught the kick out from Roy Lavelle, soloed straight through the defence and stuck it in the back of the net. And, you know, it, it epitomised basically how up for what Common were and how very, very flat goal they were. But I do think... Kevin has worked very hard. You know, Paddy Talley has come in. A lot of people are critical of that. I, sh I see that as a good man management. He looked at the situation where they conceded 118 against Kerry last year in, in the quarterfinal. They conceded 215 against Roscommon. And he said, you know, he put up his hand and said, we can do it a bit of help here. 
Big additions, I think, are Sean Andy O'Kelly at fullback. He's come in from the under-21. He's a plus. Sean Kelly at wingback is a big, big plus. And a key guy, I think, for Galway in the forwards the next day is Ian Burke. Ian Burke was magnificent for Curfin this year. He gave an exhibition, we'll say, against uh, Nemo Rangers, and he's a key guy. Ian didn't play with Galway last year until they beat Donegal. He didn't play in the Connacht Championship at all. So I think Galway have added a little bit. They've also got a top-class free taker in Barry McHugh. So last year, Ross Common came, they saw, and they conquered. And they beat up Galway in their home patch, which kind of contradicts David's point a little bit as regards the home advantage. I don't think, you know, the hide... Our, our, our Tune Stadium, our Pierce Stadium. I think teams are so organised now and they're so professional. I don't know, you know, Galway have beaten Mayo at home in, in McHale Park in 16 and 18. So I, I don't know about that. When Mayo were going well, they hammered Galway often enough at Pierce Stadium. So I know Lee McHale has spoken about that today, but I would disregard that to a certain degree. I know Kevin, and I, I understand and I agree, and I think the game should be in Hyde Park, absolutely. Yeah. But I do think playing in Division 1, um, you know, the seven games unbeaten until Dublin beat them, I think that has added a lot to Galway. Um, you know, Fintan McCurry, and going back to your question a long way around, Tiger Rookin and the Smith did a huge number. Smith was fantastic. But Galway are going with Conroy and Tom Flynn now. Fintan unfortunately broke his leg badly at the tail end of last season, and he's going to be out for a long, long time still, it looks like. So, you know, Conroy and Flynn, they have to have, their pride has to be dented from last year. And I, I think that could be a factor. If, if, if they're worth the jerseys that they're wearing, they should be going to Hyde Park saying, under no circumstance are Ross Common going to dance over us like they did last year. And there's questions on both sides because Gaul was flattered to deceive. Last year, they beat Mayo, you know, the beat them we talked about, and this is looking good. Uh, you know, it was a tight game, 15 1 11. Keith Higgins' sending off was a huge factor, I felt. But then Ross Common came, trounced them. Then they scored 4 17 against Donegal. And then Kerry came and beat them very, too easy by, by far in Crow Park. So the question still remains which Galway team is going to show up? And likewise, which Ross Common team is going to show up? Because while they did win Division 2 very well, I thought they were very loose at the back against, uh, Cavan, and I think both sets of forwards have the taking of both sets of backs, which is one of the reasons I'm very, very much looking forward to the game, to be quite honest. Well, Galway have improved immensely defensively over the past 12 months, and you mentioned Paddy Talley there, and it's interesting when you talk about the reaction. I don't know, is it some sort of Galway pride that the tradition in Galway is of this brilliant attacking football that they don't want to admit that they've brought in an outsider to sort of toughen them up a little bit, but they had the best defensive record through the league. They only conceded 12 points against Mayo down at McHale Park. Okay, Sligo didn't put up any sort of a challenge at all. Like, why is there almost a, a funny sort of attitude towards Paddy Talley coming in and not wanting to give him, and even Kevin Welsh, the credit for looking at what the issues were and wanting to correct them and say, yeah, listen, this guy's made a huge impact. Yeah, we are defensive, but we feel that it's going to bring us further than we've gone in, in many years. I would, I would call it naivety to a certain degree and maybe harking back to the glory days. David has mentioned, you know, Fallon, uh, Joyce, Donlan, but that's 20 years ago, Nathan, and the whole world has moved on, you know, like, and, and GA has moved on. So I think the goal with defenders would find themselves under huge pressure if they're left in a one-on-one situation. I, I, I don't know what year it was, but Tipperary gave us an awful tremendous there years ago. I think they scored four or five goals. It was mortifying. There was Tipperary people shaking my hand in the stands saying they couldn't believe it. So, like, you have to be realistic. And Kevin Walsh has talked about consistency. So, you know, they conceded 118. Kerry beat them by eight. Ross Common beat them by nine. And Kevin obviously said... Two things has happened, have happened. One, there's a huge ownership, or onus now on the players themselves, the senior players, to take ownership of the thing and to show leadership. That's number one. Because if they don't do that, and they didn't do that against Ross Common last year, well, no man is going anywhere. Mm. And secondly, I think he looked at Paddy Talley as someone that would be a fresh voice. I think Kevin Bryan and Sean Conlon have been for four years. A fresh voice, uh, different modifications. But the Galway public don't, haven't bought into it fully. They want, oh, Shane Walsh can get the ball and do as he wishes, or Damien Comer or Ian Burke, but, like, you can't, that, there's no point in Galway going out scored in 115 and Roscommon scored in 216. So, I think the Galway public have, and oh, they've been a little bit spoiled as well by the hurling, you see, Nathan, and Dave, you know, uh, well appreciates this as well. The hurlers went on last year and won great glory, and Joe Canning and David Burke and Connor Whelan and fantastic players. And they like the success of that, and they love that, and it had been the 87, 88. So they're a little bit spoiled by that. You go to a hurling match, and it's 
225 to 119. We've seen the fantastic games in the round robin. You go to a football match and it's 12-10. Oh, the Mayo go out get match didn't really set that many people light. So they hark back to those years. But Kevin has a job to do, and I respect him for trying to do it. And I yeah. also think, you know, good leadership needs people that are prepared to go out and look for his support and delegate to a certain degree. They're trying to empower the players, and Tally is a cog in that wheel. I think he comes out once a week, but he's a fresh voice. He brought to own a lot of success, but people mightn't like it. And there's loads of critics absolutely loads of them some of the top paid pundits in the game have been incredibly critical but when you know a cynic could say well your own county is in division four perhaps or your own county has been hasn't got to a Leinster final in years if you have all the answers if you really have all the answers throw your lot in with the county and show us how to do it we're always guilty David of, of maybe looking too far ahead and looking at Galway's system and thinking it probably very well suited to Super 8s and the games against the real elite teams and, and, and Roscommon may well count themselves there but it, it feels as though their tactics worked in that dogfight against Mayo people didn't like it it maybe wasn't the showpiece that people thought for two All-Ireland contenders but they grounded it out they got the job done deep into injury time if they are to go to another level if they are to push on and win this Connacht final and kick on in the Super 8s like quite often with these defensive systems it's the transition that's key it's been able to get it when you do win the ball back when you do get the turnovers to get it into your quality forwards and go away they most certainly have them, but do they have the players who can make that transition? Um, they definitely have the, the, the guys with the speed. And if you were to make a transition work for you, you had to have pace and you have to got uh, fluidity through the middle and to have them players. But the whole thing is, whatever's played now in the Connacht final, whatever was played four weeks ago in Mayo versus Galway, it's, it's, it goes out the window in the, in the reality of the Super 8s or an Ireland quarter final in the last 15 minutes to go where it's just out and out football. And again, Galway know how to play out and out football. But again, I, I think they've adapted to it and you can't, you can't be porous at the back. And even though, I, the one thing I would say, even though Galway have um, what we say a defensive system, I thought they've been very lax on numerous occasions in giving away silly fouls too many fouls, um, even in, during the Mayo game. As in, their, their system is right, but I don't think their, their, their actual physicality and the tackle is right. And that's something with games, you can get it right. You, well, you what, can, what do you mean by that? So like, like very silly, um, I, I, I'm lunging in, you know, with 35, yard, 35 yards out, 30, out, 30 yards out, um, even, you know, even against Sligo. Um, the, the, the free taker, the Sligo free taker, had numerous chances. Mayo had numerous chances, and they can't give that to the likes of um, the, of, of Craig or, or one of the Murtis on, on Sunday. To have to be more, I suppose, more astute in their tackling, mm. and it's okay to be in the position, but you have to you have to carry out and execute it to uh, to perfection. And um, look at this 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 um, these two managers, and I I I, I don't buy into this guy coming from here and making this whole transition, or a guy coming from. Clare, Curry, Cork, Dublin, and getting the credit for it. I think the credit has to go to the likes of, of Kevin Walsh and Kevin McStay. Like, in all fairness, they're two very astute, conniving managers, and uh, but they're honest. They're honest. And I, I think, for me, what, what, what has typified um, Kevin McStay's tenure, uh, when they won the Connacht final last year, there was a sign on the wall. It said, honesty of effort. And, and that's what, and, and, and absence of ego. And that's what he brings to the system. And these, look, he's, they're calling them young players for the last four or five years. Like, eventually they're going to have to start shaving and grow old. Like, this is, this is the kind of the, the saying, oh, we have a young team, we have a young team. They have a young team. But so does everyone else nearly. Mm. The team they're playing is as young as you'll get. For me, one of the key players on Sunday is Rory Lavelle in goal for Galway. He cannot, he cannot give um, fodder to the likes of Andrew Smith who dominated their own midfield. Paul Conroy coming in is astute. You have Tomas Flynn there who's a, who's a big physicality. Uh, if go, if, was, if, if Galway were to win it, they can't give possession to the to the big men around the middle um, for Roscommon, especially. And Andrew Smith just dominated that game last year. Yeah. And uh, again, the start, you, you might as well make a cup of tea at the start because it's not going to be nice, it's not going to be pretty. But that's football and I'm looking forward to it no matter what way it turns out. Yeah, Ray, kick-out strategy is always interesting because we lay the blame at the feet of Rory Lavelle and he being the goalkeeper and he being the one who's right there in the heat of battle. But often then you have to turn to the management and wonder why they went with that strategy when it's not working, when Enda Smith is dominating. When you've watched Galway this year through the league and against Mayo, do you look at a team that have really worked on their kick-out strategy because it has become such a focal point in the game now? 
Yeah, well, Lavelle, you know, Lavelle took a lot of heat last year over that defeat. You know, he went short a few times, and Bernie, Bernie, Bernie Power came in then. Bernie Power was in goal for the Kerry game, and yeah, he was in goal for the Donegal match as well. But because of Perfin's involvement in the All Ireland series, Lavelle has nailed down that jersey. He's changed clubs as well now. He plays with Sultan and Nakara. And no disrespect to his own club, you know, it, it gives him higher profile. He he nailed the free brilliantly there. Uh, Salt Hill were playing Killallan, and at the last kick of the game, Lavelle came up to score from about 45 yards. They leveled the game. So, like, he has matured a lot. And David's point is well made about it's time for some of these guys to stand up and be countered. And a guy who had a big influence against uh, Mayo was Tom Flynn. You know, he he, he he caught a sensational kick out when he came back on. He scored a point. Like Tom, by my reckoning, I'm about six foot. I'd say Tom is about six foot five. Now, you're six foot five and you won an All-Ireland under 21, I think, in 2011 and 2013. So 11, seven years. You're hitting 25 or 26 years of age. So if you really want to be classified as a, as a serious inter-county player, like, you know, the top midfielders, like, OK, we're looking at Tom, Brian Fenton is unbelievable, James McCarthy, Tom Parsons, hopefully he gets back from his knee, or Shami O'Shea or Aidan O'Shea. You've got to go out and dominate these games. You can't have Andy Smith going out catching ball, but Lavelle's kickouts. You can't lay it all in the goalies. You look at the wing backs there, uh, Sweeney and Kelly, they have to make space. Brannigan has fantastic pace, and J- uh, Johnny Heaney has done very well. So, you know, Lavelle is only as good as that, but likewise, Cullum Lavin for West Common, he's going to be targeting Compton and O'Rourke. Now, Will Smith has picked at 11, you'd assume he's going to go out. Uh, Connor Devaney has scored three points, the team captain. He's at 12, but last year I thought he played seven, and Brian Stack is good hands. So, it's going to be practically huge, but. I just want to go back on one point David made, and it was well made. When I'm praising Tally, I, I praise Kevin for bringing him in. But I think how you measure any manager, be that Kevin McStay, who's a top manager, or Kevin Walsh, you have to look at the players and look at the improvement that has happened under the manager's tenure. That's the real asset test. Now, Heaney scored 2-2 last year against uh, Donny Gall. He's come on in leaps and bounds. Young Sean Kelly, his dad was a top player as well, Lord Reston. He played with Galway in 87 when they got beaten by Cork in the semi-final. He's improved a lot. Eamon Brannigan has improved. Damien Comer has improved beyond all recognition. So, Kevin and his management team have worked incredibly hard on these players. And ultimately, and if any of them were listening, I'd say, guys, when you step over the whitewash now, it really is up to you. So Lavelle's kick out to huge. One guy I'm going to mention is David Goldrick, the uh, referee from Meath, because, you know, we're coming to be goal fair and square, but Goal brought it back to maybe three or four points, and David Goss gave a few frees here and there. Now, Goldrick will be interested because discipline, team discipline is going to be huge. We saw the influence in last year's All-Ireland final, if we ever need an example, when Donald Vaughan got sent off, the impact that had in the game. Uh, Jim O'Connor sending off from Mayo was huge. So if any player on the Roscommon set up or the Galway set up steps out of line badly and lets the team down, Goldrick is a very experienced referee. He did Galway and Kerry last year, and he's done a few All-Ireland yeah. finals. He'll give you road like So discipline all over the players, personal discipline for the collective team is going to be huge. So, you know, it's going to be, as David said, for the first 15 or 20 minutes, I'd say it's going to be pretty intense stuff till people settle down and move on a bit. And, you know, I call it, bookies have gone away, hot, hot favourites at 9-4, to four, I think, with Ross Common at, five, you know, way out of 5-2. to two. I don't see it like that. Based on Galway doing very well in Division 1 and having improved significantly, I feel, I'd give them a slight nod. Right. But, you know, if we get out of the Hyde Park with a one-point win, everyone in Galway will be delighted with that. I do want to talk about Ross Common and where they may go about winning this game. But just before we leave Galway, Ray, Shane Walsh, uh, Darrow Shea was writing about him, and he's probably one of those players that you're saying, like we talk about great young players, now's the time, he needs to go and prove he's one of the best in the country. Darrow Shea was writing in the Irish Times saying he can be infuriating at times, so much ability, class and craft that you see him sometimes and wonder why he isn't an automatic all-star every year but Galway's return from Shane Walsh's ability it's just too low they don't get enough bang for his buck he's electric when he's running the ball but what use is that to Galway if he's collecting possession in his own half-back line and what are your thoughts on that do, are Galway getting the most out of Shane Walsh do, do they know how to get the most out of Shane Walsh no, and it's not a it's not an easy easy task. Like I coach Shane in St. Charles, and mm. like I've, uh, if David Brady or Ray Silk had Shane Walsh's natural ability, we'd be talking four or five all stars. Because well, technically he is he's as good as anybody in the country. But a quick anecdote once I think it was a juvenile training session, so I was trying to get them to work on their weak foot, and Shane turned to me in front of the whole panel and he said, "Sir, I'm not sure which is my weak foot," <laughs> and I didn't know what to laugh or cry, but that's. 
but he, that's how talented he is. I've seen him score sidelines with St. Charlotte's with, uh, from one sideline with his left foot and the other sideline with his right foot. Like, he's just, he's just incredibly talented. But to answer your question, no, Galway haven't got enough out of Shane Walsh. But you know what? Shane Walsh hasn't got enough out of Shane Walsh because, you know, they've tried him inside, they've tried him here, they've tried him there. At a certain stage, Shane has to look in the mirror and say, I'm underachieving. We'll all remember, you remember this superb... Uh, flick up and score against yeah. maybe Tipperary a few years ago. Someone drove in a 45 and he flicked it up to himself and scored with his other foot. But that's three or four years ago now. So, like, Shane has to... I don't think you can expect a manager... You can coach and you can do all you can and Stephen Rochford or Jim Gavin or Brian Cody or, uh, uh, you know, Michal Donahue. You can coach and you co- can coach, but ultimately players have to respond. So I agree, Shane hasn't got enough. How you play him, I'd say Gall will be going with Ian Burke, Damien Cormer inside, maybe Barry McHugh coming out and Shane working hard. But, you know, when they are trying to, and I'm not gone on this phrase, but we'll have to use it till we get another one, while they are transitioning the ball, that's where Brannigan, Walsh, Heaney and Kelly come in. Because Walsh, you know, he's fantastic pace. But have we got enough out of him? No. And do we need more if Galway are going to be a top four team? Absolutely. Just to finish on Galway, the win in this game, I think, could be the bench. And, you know, Galway are a lot better than they have been heretofore. Like, Sean Armstrong could come on. It was good to see Michael Daly coming on the last day. He, you know, he hit the post last year and it was a big moment early in the first half. Kieran Duggan must be injured because he was fantastic against Mayo. Owen Curran, I assume, is injured. Peter Cook. But at least when Kevin turns to the bench now, he's got four or five viable options. Whereas a few years ago, it was a bit like, did you hear the one about when the manager turns to the bench and he says there'd be more life in the graveyard looking back at some of Elad. At least now he has seven or eight guys that could be game changers. And in the last quarter, that's what has made the difference for Dublin. And I think on Sunday, that could be the difference for Galway as well. Yeah. On, on the Shane Walsh thing, uh, I think it's 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 for the sake of it that Dara's given off. So he's saying he's getting a lot of ball. He's getting he's handing over and back. Um, he outscored Kieran Kilkenny in the league. If you if you look at it, he plays a lot similar to Kieran Kilkenny. Kieran doesn't doesn't dominate the games. He he he's 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 more or less the conduit. And I think Shane Shane has played that way as well. Um, probably not to the, the the greater degree of intensity, or it doesn't always look good. But he's willing to sacrifice part of his game, and if he was willing to sacrifice it, um, he he he's going he's he's playing a, he's doing a team job. And the big thing, um, I remember Ray. Who was your first manager that ever gave you your start? Bosco McDermott was his name. And you, you you have you have time from ever since. And I think with the likes of Kevin Walsh brought in five debutants last year, like that's that's a ga- it's not a gamble. He said, you know what, I I'm showing faith in you. The likes of the Mayo's of this world haven't done that. Kevin McStay has done it, and you will be loyal to the day you die on, for the man to give you the start. Mm. On Ross Conley, hey, one thing on. before you finish with Shane Walsh, sorry Nathan for cutting across you, Dave, just a, a, a different a mayor perspective, where would you play Shane Walsh? Like, what would you classify his absolute best position? When he gets the ball in his hand near the goal, I, do, I, I, I honestly think I would, I, you would have a lethal, a lethal and a, a full forward line if you had Shea and Comer in deep. Is that not what Darrow Shea is saying? That he's just playing too deep? Well, he is, he's the athlete. Is McHugh the athlete? You need two Shea Walshes, essentially. Well, you, ha- you, have, you have the yin and the yang with Shea Walsh and, and Comer. You have, you have the, one of the most powerful and one of the most speediest players inside. And you would occupy a lot of space in there for guys to be running hard. I have to drive through mm-hmm. Roscommon in the next couple of weeks, so I want to talk about yes. Roscommon before we do wrap up. <laughs> so, <laughs> presuming, be shot. <laughs> presuming that Galway get a little bit more parity at the very least in the middle of midfield and Roscommon can't dominate around there where are the other openings where can Max Day and McHale what will they've been working on over the last couple of weeks in the areas of this Galway team that they can attack that they, they can play the game in their terms I honestly believe if, if, if Roscommon keep it really tight really tight on the offence but they have to play with pace because I, I'm not 100% convinced of the, the, the tackling technique of the Galway defence. They know the position, they know where they should be, but they can't, I don't think they can execute it to the, to the degree where they need to be. So you're saying uh, ask that question and ask seek that to question. 10, 11 fouls yeah, out of the Yes, fouls. that's it. And nice. ag- again, uh, Dave Goldrick, he, he, he will have a lot to say about it. But if you, if, you, if you put your hand in and you dive in, and you, needlessly, and I would say you're in no danger when you have the ball going laterally. And I, uh, time and time again, I've seen Galway lunge in or go for the big, the big tackle when, the, when that need is in there and you're 35 yards out. And if you've got, like, Dermot Worth, he, he's, um, he, he's one of their top, top scorers, but he's a great free taker. You have um, Kyle Compton or that. 
he, he, these guys can take can take frees and they can take points, but I think that they need to play it tight and draw the fouls from Galway. It was brilliant to watch in the documentary last year on Roscommon winning the Connacht title, the sort of metamorphosis that Kevin McStay underwent to become a full-blown Roscommon man and everybody in Roscommon to believe in that. And he, he came out and he said, we're playing this game in the Hyde Park and there was all talks behind the scenes of would they travel if they had to go away and they've got the game in well, front yeah, of like, 18,000. Like, like, is it a factor? Like, people look at the Hyde the, Park, it's you a know what? Shackle, it's Is it? They're making it a factor. Kevin mm. came out before that Galway had ever beaten Sligo. Like, they said, this is, we're going to make this a point of opinion. And a, uh, more, more, the whole factor. They didn't want us to play her. You, sometimes you have to pump up an underdog. Yeah. I'm, I'm specifically... I'm so, specifically, so ordinarily, it's not a fortress. No, but you can make it a factor. Graveyard you can, end. you can say, yeah, yeah. Look, uh, at the end of the day, as Ray says, teams lose at home. Yeah. But it's when you're, they're making it such a point, and, and Liam McHale are going. This is our script, boys. Let's talk about Hyde. How much of, how much it 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 it, it means. How much is going to, um, be involved in the game. And you're going. The crowd is going to be there again. Um, you, you can have you can have four or five of the best backs. Our forwards coming on for the goal, but if Roscommon get on top like they did last year, and and they they, they had they have they had the capability of doing it, not for seventy minutes, but if you get it, if you get on top for 20, 25 minutes of the first half, and don't let go into the game, don't let the likes of Comer or Shane Walsh get on ball, don't let Flynn get ball, don't get, don't let anyone get comfortable. That's what you need to do with someone that's not red hot favourites, but slight favourites in my eyes. All right. Good one, stuff. One thing go about on, the Hyde lads is uh, just going back to 2016. You know, it was a draw, and then go it won well. But that replay was in McHale Park, and I think mm. any Ross Common supporter would be annoyed by that. You know, they spent a lot of money on on Hyde Park, and I taught in Ross Common CBS for a few years. It's correct and fair that that game is in Hyde Park. I don't think any Galway person would would object to going down there. So it's it's good that it's in Hyde Park. I've had some fantastic uh, trips down there. I remember in '98, I went to a replay as well, and we got out of there after extra time. And a huge memory I have is 1990, Val Daly was centre forward against Roscommon and he shot the lights out, but Eamon Jr. McManus shot them out the far side and Roscommon beat them as well. So I don't think Roscommon have any fear of Galway, but they have some bloody good forwards. Jim Murtha scored five points last year, Donny Smith is a good player, Kieran Murtha, Conor Devaney and Gilroy goes out the field. But, you know, I just think that Galway should, should be unbelievably up for this game you can't let someone come up and David played on the edge as well and you know Mayo beat us we beat them in 95 they beat us in 96, 97 we beat them in 98 and they came to Tume a driven team in 99 I think that hurt from last year should be worth a few a few notches on Galway's belt I'm not saying they're going to win for sure although, but like I'm just saying going down on that Galway team bus Kevin Walsh shouldn't have much to say at all to be quite honest he should just be saying Let's not forget last year, guys, yeah. and let's show our supporters what they deserve. But, you know, uh, you know, Ross Common deserve phenomenal respect because Murta, Conor Devaney and the Smith, then there's a few boys to come in there. Uh, Kyle Craig could come on. King Conley scored 1-1 last year. You know, they have a bench as well. But if Galway can't beat Ross Common, well, then all this progress that has been talked about, we're going to have to take a second look on it and reflect upon it. If Galway get bet at this kind of final... There's not a second look. There's a third and fourth look because again, it's 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 going to be a disaster. Yeah. All right, Ray. We will talk to you on Sunday. You're going to be at the Hyde Park reporting for us. He's in Mercy at the moment. Twenty six degrees. I could Let hear. Him, I could smell the Zangri off him there when he's talking about <laughs> David David Goldrick and David Goldrick. Well, yeah, I wasn't yeah, sure if he should better. Yeah, that. yeah, I, yeah. I, I, he better not. He better not send off any of the Roscommon yeah. players. I, I have a feeling we're going to have a BAI investigation into yeah, bias. Yeah. I just uh, want to yeah. mention one player. David Goldrick, yeah, Sub yeah. Subtle mind games from... Uh, Kevin's happy with you now, Ray. You've, you've <laughs> well, heard, look, Black, Black Hall Gales, if David wants to get another Ireland final, he did, he did Cork and Kerry boys in 2007. Now, oh, that's a long time ago, like. So, you know, if he wants to get another All Ireland <laughs> final now, he has to do a good job a good, good job on Sunday. But look, look after the goal, all boys. Aside, yeah, I'm, 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 home, I'm home tomorrow night, and I believe the wind and rain is something serious, but regardless... And I'm not being smart. My wife will shoot me for saying this, but I felt Galway would, would be in a Connacht final. So when we were planning the hit trip, I was saying, I want to be in Hyde Park on, on, on or McHale Park. I didn't mind on June the 17th. And that's, I'm looking forward to the game. And as I say, the old cliche, unlike, oh, here, can we get David Brady's prediction before we close this down? Go on, David. I'm going for us, Common. <laughs> Why? Oh. I didn't see that coming. Well, I'm going for Galway anyway, here, Brady, and I'm going for Galway by two points. So we'll have a we'll have a we'll have a pint bottle of Bulmers on it. Yeah, yeah. I I, I just have this. I, I think that, that that especially after last year and everything else. And it, again, it it's at home, 
and there's going to be an edge to it. Mm. Uh, and I think if you can question Galway from the very start, I think Roscommon has every every chance. Listen, the battle to be the but second David, best you're going, team. You're going based on tough. last year. Surely last year the revenge factor should be huge for Galway this year. If revenge factor was a factor, we'd have four All Irelands in Mayo. <laughs> Go on, go on. Hey, no, go back bad. and enjoy your holiday, Ray. We'll talk to you Sunday. Take care. Thanks, lads. Cheers. Bye. We have a text in for Chris. Lads, did David Brady just take a slug from John Giles' glass of water on I the I did. Desk? And I, you know what? I was looking at it. <laughs> You'll be gaining Giles' punditry know-how by osmosis in no time. What did you make of Saudi Arabia against Russia? Absolutely brilliant, in all fairness. But in the last 10 minutes, it was fitness. It was fitness. <laughs> there we have it. There we have it. The ultimate. Come in and drink uh, John Giles' water every week. DB, great to have you in. A As pleasure always, to be we'll in. talk to you over the next yes, few weeks. Yes, look forward to it. Uh, that'll all be up on podcast as well. Right, we're going to take a quick break and then we're heading to Shinnecock Hills. GAA on Off The Ball. Brought to you by the Boyle Sports app. Cash out and in-play betting available in the App Store and Google Play Store. Moncrief. Flutes are out of style. Ah, uh, Kay wants to know. I have loads of them in the press. Do I dump them? What do we drink champagne from instead? Now they're actually finding that just an ordinary, good quality wine glass works just as well. So, so hang on to your flutes and they probably cost you a fortune as well. John and Limerick says, right, I'm hanging on to my flute. Please ask the wine lady, what do I do next? Moncrief. Weekdays from 2pm. On News Talk. Oi, van owners. Sure you know time is money, so save both. Visit chill.ie for a quick quote. Chill Insurance Limited, trading as Chill Insurance, is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Lidl have beef. We've got beef with anyone who doesn't believe our 100% Irish beef is, well, 100% Irish. Locally sourced, totally...